special. We will discuss phillyisms as well as interesting online records. Welcome to Genealogy Quick Start. Being a Jersey girl, Philly holds a special place in my heart. As a child, my cousins and I thought that we were the most special people in the world when my Aunt Lorraine would take us on the speed line to Philly. It was like going to an amusement park. We'd cross the big river and then plunge underground into the belly of the city. Philadelphia is a part of my family's great migration story. Lineages from Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina converged on the city in the 1910s. My large tumor family moved north to Nectarine Street. I'm not sure if that's how Philly people pronounce that street or if that was my family's southern accent. After a few births, including my grandfather, they soon built homes and settled in East Berlin, New Jersey. As an adult, the city is not just a huge cultural center of neighborhoods with more restaurants than anyone can truly keep up with but the city is where I learned to do all the things that came together to shape me as Shamel, the genealogist and TV producer. Genealogically, I began when my cousin Floyd took me to the African American Genealogy Group. I was blessed to learn from so many dedicated family historians. Creatively, I began when Manira Higgs introduced me to Louis Messiah at the Scribe Video Center, writing, documentary, and field production. I said, I can be all that I want to be in this place. Then I found out that Gretchen from Scribe was now going to executive direct Philadelphia's new public access channel, Philly Cam. And I said, I'm a be on TV. Enough about me. That's how Philly I am. How Philly are you? Well, how do you know? First, you want to start with the question. Then you want to do the quick start. Let's ask the question, Three. what does it mean to be Philly? To ask the question, we did street genealogy. We offered free consultations. The problem was everyone had to get back to work. They didn't have time. So we had a good day anyway. We did about 10 quick starters per hour, and it was a great day. Hi, my name is Kevin, and I just sat with Jim doing Ancestry.com. Um, I gave him my grandparents' name. I don't know a lot about my family. Um, and on very limited information, he punched up a couple names, and we traced back some census birth records, and I didn't even know how easy it was. Um, I looked up my great-grandparents and where they were from, something I didn't know. I learned a new thing today. It's really great. I think I might explore that a little further with some uh, DNA testing. If, let's say you were looking for your grandfather and you can't find anything, if you find information about one of his siblings or cousins or aunt or whatever, that can also be another way of getting yourself connected. Because you do, they call that collateral family when it works out so well. You know, this was something that I knew, like my grandfather and my uncle keep pretty uh, good family records. So they always talked about kind of being descended from uh, Thomas Jefferson, his family. But it was really, this was the first time I like actually saw the tree myself, could walk it down myself. You know, one thing that I did find out, I was born and raised Muslim. And uh, my, my parents took on, on different names, different last names. So had I not known my father's name before he became Muslim, I couldn't have looked him up. So people, you have to, if you do become a different religion and you change your name, you have to let your children know what their name was so they can know who they are and they can know who to research. I'm a descendant of the great Paul Robeson. Um, I know a lot of it, most, for the most part, I know a lot about his background, and uh, I was just intrigued today just knowing um, that I have family bigger than what, what it looks like. Um, I'm just baffled for words right now. I'm speechless. Eventually, I was able to wrangle a few people and ask, please tell me 
What does it mean to be Philly? My name is Harold Burnley. The neighborhood I represent is Philadelphia. And if I had to pick a section, we'll call it West Philadelphia. I was not born in Philly. I was born about a softball throw away from Philadelphia in Yeadon. My Philly connection, I guess, would be my mother. My name is Valerie Harris. I represent West Philadelphia. I was born in Philadelphia. I was born in the Eastwick section of Philadelphia. My Philly connection is that I was born here, raised here, moved away, came back, and will probably be here. My name is Nick and I represent Spring Garden. I wasn't born in Philly, I was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I came to the United States when I was 10 years old, and I came on a banana and coffee boat. My name is Debbie Redman. The neighborhood I represent is Kensington. I was not born in Philly, but I have lived here for 25 years. Being Philly means having an attitude, and we spell it a little differently. We spell it A-D-D-I-T-O-O-D. -O -O -D. Being Philadelphia means that you're special, that you're different, that you're understood and respected. There was always signs that said, this is the oldest, this is the first, this is this, and it was that. And um, I kind of was raised to take pride in that. Being Philly means being myself. Philadelphia is a large city with perhaps a smaller town feel. Amazing neighborhoods filled with um, people from all backgrounds. Nobody wants to be sick, but if you have to be sick, you want to be sick in Philadelphia. Think about it, people come from all over the world to get Philadelphia health care. What makes Philly special is, is that we're between two big cities and they don't really care about us, so we could get away with almost anything. Philly has great organic community gardeners and independent media makers and amazing artists. What Philly has and nobody else has is hoagies and cheese sticks. Go anywhere else and try to get what they call a hoagie, a submarine. A famous Philly product that I must have is a Philadelphia soft pretzel with mustard. But only if it's sold to you by a guy who looks like he just stepped out of a leper colony. Every now and then I have to have a hoagie. Well, there's a couple of Philly products that I must have. One, of course, is Teller's Pork Roll, Nick's Roast Beef. A common Philly saying is, yo. And yo is used for everything. Yo, come here. Yo, go over there. You know, yo. Nowhere else have I heard the word John. John is the word you use for anything that you can't remember what it really is. Like, I'm talking to this John over here. I think you people call it a camera. <laughs> my five top Philly faves are being able to ride my bike almost anywhere in the city, loving uh, Fairmount Park, BYOB restaurants, which are the most wonderful thing in the world, um, the history, the culture, and the people. I love um, Bartram's Garden on the Schuylkill, and I love Penn Treaty Park on the Delaware. And um, I, I actually could think of something that I love about every neighborhood in Philadelphia. The Parkway with the Art Museum, uh, Children's Hospital, one of my favorite places. I spent a lot of time at the Philadelphia Inquirer and Daily News, which is a very big favorite of mine. I can tell you some stories about that. My other Philly favorite, I would have to say, is Mother Bethel Church. Uh, that's very special in my heart. 
And I would have to say, Center City, Philadelphia, what a, what a place. Today, I have the pleasure to welcome two special guests, Valerie Harris, writer and producer, and Harold Burnley, CEO of Burnley Electric and Technology. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Sean. So, Valerie and Harold, let's do the quick start. Are you culturally Philly? We did interviews today where people answered questions about Philly from Fairmount Park to food. But when asked, without even being asked, Harold and Valerie responded to the same thing. One thing I always liked about Philadelphia, um, and I think, I, and I still do, is our transportation system. Be it ever so old, raggly, or humble, you can get wherever you need to get within the city of Philadelphia and a, and a goodly number of places outside of Philadelphia on public transportation. And that really is a blessing when you have lived in places where you, where a car feels more necessary. If you got on the L train and if you passed out and went to sleep and you woke up, you could tell where you were by the sounds and smells of Philadelphia. If you came through West Philadelphia, you could smell the smell cook of bread baking, bond bread. That's an old Philadelphia favorite that people don't remember. Yingling beer. The problem with the street events in Philly, Philadelphia just looks for a chance to have a party. If they don't have a party going on, they have these things called block parties. Now, block parties are all right unless you run a business because you try to get from one end of town to the other, you've got to go around 33 block parties. And what is a block party? Let's talk about that for a minute. In Philadelphia, block parties, when you go get a jump rope and run it across the street, and that one jump rope stop, cars, okay, and a bouncy house, you've got a block party. Barbecue smelled for miles. And then we had new kind of people in, like new people, West Indians and so on, who weren't used to that. And I think one of them went to the police station and told them. Then the police came and put uh, notes on our door and said, that said, um, the block part. The block party is a time-honored Philadelphia tradition, but the problem is everybody on the block has to agree to it. You cannot just shut off the block for just you and your family. You have to have a petition and so on. So he had to explain the whole workings of the block party. But if you know, we're just passing the summertime, and you know, the block party is still alive and well in Philadelphia. The fact that they both talked about transportation and block parties tells me that that is the epicenter of culture in Philly. So obviously, they are both very Philly. We've covered the nurture part of Philly. Now let's move on to the genealogy. But before we move on to step two, let's learn about some interesting records for researching your Philly family. About Philadelphia records available online. How Philly are the large genealogy okay. websites? Family Search is a free site. On Family Search, there are indexed and unindexed me, records. This means Don't that some records can be retrieved using the search boxes and some cannot. Image only are records which you can browse only, not use the search boxes. Then there are lots of records available. An interesting record is the Philadelphia case files for Chinese immigrants from 1900 to 1923 with pictures. Visit the Family Search Wiki. They have a page with links to online Pennsylvania records. What does Ancestry, a subscription service, have to offer Philadelphia? One of the many interesting free indexes is the Philadelphia Immigrant Bank. Immigrant banks were used to save money to bring family to America. To get a copy of the record, contact the Philadelphia Jewish Archives Center at Temple. Not only did immigrants save money to bring family to America, they also saved for burials. The Pennsylvania Order Sons of Italy in America, founded in 1913, was one such group. 
The records contain biographical information, death certificates, and possibly much more. Maybe your ancestors enjoyed other people's savings. Then you'd find them here, Eastern State Penitentiary. Not only are these records on ancestry, also check out the American Philosophical Society and the University of Pennsylvania. They cover 19th and 20th century, and the type of information varies by record. I don't know about you, but I think that it's pretty important to know what kind of tattoo your ancestor had. Possibly your ancestor was baptized or married in the Philadelphia Roman Catholic Church. Visit Finding My Past where you can view the index for free. If you're looking for city directories online, go to Fold3. If you're looking for the Philadelphia Inquirer, check out newspapers.com. Beyond the big genealogy sites, there are other records available online. Universities have a wealth of information for genealogy. Villanova has the Bishop's Bank books from the late 1800s. Many members trusted the church much more than the private banks. Philadelphia was not only a destination for immigrants, many runaways leaving the South passed through Philadelphia. The Historical Society of Pennsylvania has digitized the journal of William Still, a prominent conductor on the Underground Railroad. View it for free on the library's website. Finally, an online resource that anyone researching an urban area needs, MAPS. This is the Greater Philadelphia Geo History Network, a free site. Here you can see modern maps and then overlay a historical map. This helps to keep track of street names and house number changes. That's a quick peek at Philly genealogy all links are available at genealogyquickstart.com. So moving on to step two, were you born in Philly? So we know from the interview that Valerie was born in Philly, she lived in Philly, she left Philly and she came back, right yes, Valerie? Yes, so Valerie yes, straight. Yes. <laughs> but Harold on the other hand over here, he had to use a sports metaphor to describe his Phillyness as far as being born in Philly. That I do. So let's go to the documents and see if these two can show ancestry in the city of Philadelphia. So Valerie, normally I do census records. Like to me, that's the quick start. Yes. So do you have a census record, say 1940, that would show your ancestors in the city of Philadelphia? Yes, I do. You do? Okay, uh -huh. let's take a look. What do we have here? Okay, so this looks like, who is this Harris, Maddie Harris? That is my grandmother. Okay, and, and George, I'm guessing, is your father? George is my father, yes. Okay, so we see your grandmom with William and Eunice, so those are your aunts and uncles? Eunice is actually an uncle. Oh, a son. And oh. he has changed his name to Eugene. Eugene, okay. Can, do you have any memories of your grandma, Maddie? Oh, God, yes. Uh, my grandmother... Um, was tall like me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she would walk around Eastwick with her white sneakers on, <laughs> tall and straight as an Indian. So tell us about her coming north. You told me a great story about her coming north. Well, um, my grandfather Raymond came first. And um, they came from Macon, Georgia, to first to Jacksonville, Florida. Look at me and then to um, Philadelphia. So my grandfather came first, mm -hmm. and then uh, my grandmother tells me that she came up on the train with all her baggage and four kids. And all these kids. And all these kids, the and, and the, um, the segregated train, so she had food and everything, and you know, she said, but people helped her. Nice. Because they saw she had all these cardboard boxes <laughs> and things and four kids, and little four kids, kids, and uh, they helped her. And that's what um, I remember about her migration. That's a nice one. And we see that your father does say Pennsylvania. He was born here. So, Harold, yes. can you show your family living in the city of Philadelphia? That again. Okay, let's see what we have here. So we have here a 1930 census, Ernest Nicholas. Nichols. Nichols, okay. Ernest so, Nichols. And who is that to you? Ernest Nichols was my uh, mother's father. Okay. And my grandfather. And uh, he was married to Ray. 
Ray, Ray okay. Yeah. And that takes us back to 1930. 19, okay, so we're, Harold, you're in the city of Philadelphia. I'm Congratulations. <laughs> so this is, an, this is a prime example. Your ancestor's name is Nichols, but this says Nicholas in the census. And your mother's name is what? Was Nichols as well. Her first name? Was uh, Vivian. And they have it down here as some kind of Liddy, um, but we know that this, this is your family. So Harold is in, we got you Harold, you're in the city of Philadelphia, okay. So let's see, what is the, how deep can you go in the 1920s, Valerie? How deep can you go? I think your family was in the 1920 census here too. Let's see if we can find some Harris's in the 19, oh, and this time, we have your grandfather, Father. Raymond, is in the household this mm -hmm. time. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So that's you in 1920, and that's about as far back as far as living in the city of Philadelphia, because I believe your people got here like 1919. Right, okay. because my father was the youngest, okay. and he was born here in 1925, and I think there were two kids born before, before him, him okay. here. So Harold, can we go a little deeper into 1900s? Let's see, what do we have here for Harold? So Harold, who is this, George Hall? That's right, that's on my mother's side as well. This is your mom's side? My I'm sorry, my father's this side. This is your father's side. That's my father's side, side. Yes. Okay, Hall's. and I see this, there's a that's Catherine. 1910, I believe. 1910, and let's see, where are they living in 1910? Does it show us on here? In South Philadelphia. So I want to tell you guys one thing that I forgot to tell you. Where were your ancestors in 1920 was living? If you look at this record, you can see they were living on Mercy, Mercy Street, Street, right? And Harold, your ancestors were living on the exact same street. Wow. In 19. We yes. On Mercy Street? On Mercy Street. South Street. Philly? You were at 1222 and you were at 1214. Get out! <laughs> so I talked about maps, right? So I'm going to show you guys where that was. So I'm going to put in this is, this is a Philadelphia map. Ooh. And so what this map allows you to do is take a present day map and look into the past. So I'm going to put Valerie's Ancestor Street. 1222 Mercy Street, Mercy Street. And when I go there, it's gonna take me there on the modern map. So that's Mercy Street, not far off of, from Broad and Passionk. And if I just go ahead and add the 1910 map and zoom in here, you guys can see you lived on the same block. Valerie, that's where your people were, and that's where Harold's people were. Oh, now. <laughs> 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 that makes me feel All right, so Hal Valerie stops. Harold, yes. you seem to be surprising me now. You're going kind of deep in the Philly here. Can, do you have any records from, say, the 1800s, maybe? For sure. <gasps> we can go all the way back to the 1800s. Let's see what you have here from the 1800s. So Har Harold, uh -huh. this looks like a marriage record. And this marriage is from St. Stephen's Episcopal Church sure. from 1850. So this is your George Kennedy Connection. and your Sarah Adams. Correct. Okay. And where does that take us? This, ta this is 1850. In St. Stephen's. That's pretty interesting, Harold. That's pretty Philly. That's yeah. pretty, pretty <laughs> Philly. So, do you guys have any kind of memory of Mercy Street at all? God, no. No? No. no? Uh uh. Um, I just knew that they lived in South Philly, that my grandmother was not happy in South Philly, that was too congested, and that they then moved to Eastwick where my grandmother could have more, more land, more space. My family did this. Tell me, you had a good story about your grandmom, Catherine. Yes, my grandmother was blind. Mm. And I can remember one time I was staying at her house for the evening, and she walked through the dining room. And for some unknown reason, I decided to get on the dining room table. 
And she said, get off of that table. And I said, well, I thought you were blind. <laughs> <laughs> That's my grandmother's. <laughs> So, Harold, it's very shocking that you were, like, right there, like, 1850. I have a feeling that you might be able to even go back a little further. A tad further we can go back. A tad further? A tad further. So I'm still wondering, like, who is this Harold Burnley? <laughs> well, <laughs> what did you find out when you went looking? Because people always wanted to take pictures of me and my we family. We made it through that spot. They, and we were always interviewed by people or for television spots. And my connection was Richard Allen. We walked down the street, but it's sort of like in the movie Coming to America. Where, oh, my goodness. It is a pleasure to meet you. Richard Allen was a slave who was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on February 14th. 1760. He um, actually was able to buy his freedom. Um, he was originally owned by Benjamin Chu. Benjamin Chu's family sold him to the Sturgis family. Richard Allen and his brothers were able to buy their freedom. Richard Allen actually paid two thousand dollars, if you can imagine, in um, 17. 76 and his significance to um, not only Philadelphia or the United States was his interest in spreading the word of religion to African Americans through the founding of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. It was the first religious denomination that was exclusively for African Americans. Bishop Ingram, who is the bishop for um, this district, he was the one who pushed to get this statue erected. And I, you know, it's hard to describe and put into words the feeling of having a African American statue sitting in a city where there are a number of statues and they are all, none of them are African American. So this was something that uh, people literally cried and so it's kind of overwhelming <laughs> um, to see this statue actually go up and be unveiled. It was just phenomenal. So Harold, I know you had to be there the day of the unveiling oh, of the yeah. statue. Proud. Jim. Tell me how that felt. It felt great. And at the last minute, my son had to jump in and do a speech. That's even more proud. So Aww. it passes right down through the family. Aww. It was a great day. Fantastic. And to have a, a statue of a black man in Philadelphia makes me really proud. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, it is. So we asked in step one, are you culturally Philly? And they knocked it out of the park. Then we asked, you know, are you born in Philly? I would say that Valerie, the Philly from Philly, didn't you say someone used to call you yeah. in New York, the Philly yeah. from Philly? Yeah. She is the Philly <laughs> from Philly. And then Harold, man, when it came to ancestors, having an ancestor born in 1760, wow. that's Philly. Thank That's some much. serious Philly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they knocked it out of the park. Thank you so much for joining us for Genealogy Quick Start. I hope that you use those census records to um, look up your ancestors and learn what it means to be Philly. And of course, you want to eat those cheese steaks. Stay away from the gray meat. Stay away from, oh, we Stay didn't talk about the gray, the gray meat. meat. We didn't use this gray meat. We didn't include Scrapple. Scrapple was very important I'm not going to eat well. anything that begins with the word scrap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on Genealogy Quick Start. Happy ancestral hunting. Why aren't my other credits running? <laughs>